Act 4, Scene 1. Enter Antony and Dolabella. Dolabella, why would you shift it from yourself on me? Can you not tell her you must part? Antony, I cannot. I could pull out an eye and bid it go. And Tulla should not weep. Oh, Dolabella, how many deaths are in this word to part? I dare not trust my tongue to tell her so. One look of hers would fall me into tears. And I should melt till I were lost again. Dolabella, then let Ventidius. He's rough by nature. Antony, oh, he'll speak too harshly. He'll kill her with the news, thou, only thou. Dolabella, nature has cast me in so soft a mould that but to hear a story, faint for pleasure, of some sad lover's death moistens my eyes, and robs me of my manhood. I should speak, so faintly, with such fear to grieve her heart, she'd not believe it earnest. Antony, therefore, therefore, thou only, thou art fit, think thyself me, and when thou speak'st, but let it first be long, Take off the edge from every sharper sound, and let our parting be as gently made, as other loves begin, wilt thou do this? Dolabella, what you have said so sinks into my soul, that, if I must speak, I shall speak just so. Antony, I leave you then to your sad task, farewell. I sent her word to meet you, goes to the door, and comes back, Closing square bracket, I forgot. Let her be told, I'll make her peace with mine. Her crown and dignity shall be preserved. If I have power with Caesar, oh, be sure to think on that. Dolabella, fear not, I will remember. Antony goes again to the door and comes back. Closing square bracket, Antony and tell her, too, how much I was constrained. I did not this, but with extremest force. Desire her not to hate my memory, for I still cherish hers, insist on that. Dolabella, trust me, I'll not forget it, Antony. Then that's all. Goes out and returns again. Closing square bracket. Wilt thou forgive my fondness this once more? Tell her that we shall never meet again. If I should hear she took another love, the news would break my heart, now I must go. For every time I have returned, I feel my soul more tender, and my next command would be to bid her stay and ruin both. Exit. Closing square bracket. Dolabella. Men are but children of a larger growth. Our appetites as apt to change as theirs. And full as craving too, and full as vain. And yet the soul, shut up in her dark room, viewing so clear abroad, at home sees nothing. But, like a mole in earth, busy and blind, works all her folly up, and casts it outward. To the world's open view, thus I discovered, and blamed the love of ruined Antony, yet wish that I were he to be so ruined. Enter Ventidius above, Ventidius, alone and talking to himself, concerned too. Perhaps my guess is right, he loved her once, and may pursue it still. Dolabella, oh, friendship, friendship, ill canst thou answer this, and reason worse. Unfaithful in the attempt, hopeless to win. And if I win, undone, mere madness all. And yet the occasion's fair. What injury to him to wear the robe which he throws by. Ventidius. None, none at all. This happens as I wish. To ruin her yet more with Antony. Enter Cleopatra talking with Alexis. Charmian, Iris on the other side. Dolabella, she comes. What charms have sorrow on that face? 
sorrow seems pleased to dwell with so much sweetness. Yet now and then a melancholy smile breaks loose like lightning in a winter's night and shows a moment's day. Ventidius, if she should love him too, her eunuch there, that poor Sikishka bodes ill weather. Draw, draw nearer, sweet devil, that I may hear. The Lexus, believe me, try. Dolabella goes over to Charmian and Iris seems to talk with them. Closing square bracket. To make him jealous, jealousy is like. A polished glass held to the lips when life's in doubt. If there be breath, twill catch the damp and show it. Cleopatra. I grant you jealousy's a proof of love. But tis a weak and unavailing medicine. It puts out the disease and makes it show, but has no power to cure. The Lexus, tis your last remedy and strongest too. And then this Dolabella, who's so fit to practice on, he's handsome, valiant, young, and looks as he were laid for nature's bait to catch weak women's eyes. He stands already more than half suspected of loving you the least kind word or glance. You give this youth will kindle him with love. Then, like a burning vessel set adrift, you'll send him down a mine before the wind to fire the heart of jealous Antony. Cleopatra, can I do this? Ah, no, my love's so true that I can neither hide it where it is nor show it where it is not. Nature meant me, a wife, a silly, harmless household dove, fond without art and kind without deceit. But fortune that has made a mistress of me hath thrust me out to the wide world unfurnished, of falsehood to be happy. The Lexus, force yourself. The event will be your lover will return doubly desirous to possess the good, which once he feared to lose. Cleopatra, I must attempt it, but oh, with what regret. Exeter to Lexus. She comes up to Dolabella. Closing square bracket, Ventidius. So, now the scene draws near, there in my reach. Cleopatra, to Dolabella. Closing square bracket, Discoursing with my women, might not I share in your entertainment? Charmian, you have been the subject of it, madam. Cleopatra, how and how? Iris, such praises of your beauty. Cleopatra, mere poetry. Your Roman wits, your Gallus and Tibullus, have taught you this from Cetheres and Delia. Dolabella, those Roman wits have never been in Egypt. Sephiris and Delia else had been unsung. I, who have seen, had I been born a poet, should choose a nobler name. Cleopatra, you flatter me, but tis your nation's vice, all of your country. Are flatterers and all false, your friends like you. I'm sure he sent you not to speak these words. Dolabella. No, madam, yet he sent me. Cleopatra. Well, he sent you. Dolabella. For the less pleasing errand. Cleopatra. How less pleasing? Less to yourself or me. Dolabella. Madam, to both. For you must mourn and I must grieve to cause it. Cleopatra. You, Charmian, and your fellow stand at distance. Hold up my spirits. Aside, well, now your mournful matter. For I'm prepared, perhaps can guess it too. Dolabella, I wish you would, for tis a thankless office. To tell ill news, and I, of all your sex. Most fear displeasing you, Cleopatra, of all your sex. I soonest could forgive you, if you should. Ventidius, most delicate advances. Women, 
women, dear damned in constant sex, Cleopatra, in the first place, I am to be forsaken, is not so. Dolopatra, I wish I could not answer to that question. Cleopatra, then pass it o'er, because it troubles you. I should have been more grieved another time. Next time to lose my kingdom, farewell, Egypt. Yet is there a re more? Dolabella, madam, I fear. Your too deep sense of grief has turned your reason. Cleopatra, no, no, I'm not run mad, I can bear fortune. And love may be expelled by other love. As poisons are by poisons. Dolabella, you overjoy me, madam. To find your grief so moderately borne. You've heard the worst, all are not false like him. Cleopatra, no, heaven forbid they should. Dolabella, some men are constant. Cleopatra. And constancy deserves reward, that's certain. Dolabella. Deserves it not, but give it leave to hope. Ventidius. I'll swear, thou hast my leave. I have enough. But how to manage this? Well, I'll consider. Exit. Closing square bracket. Dolabella. I came prepared. To tell you heavy news, news which I thought would fright the blood from your pale cheeks to hear, but you have met it with a cheerfulness. That makes my task more easy, and my tongue, which on another's message was employed, would gladly speak its own. Cleopatra, told Dolabella, first tell me, were you chosen by my lord, or sought you this employment? Dolabella, he picked me out, and, as his bosom friend, he charged me with his words. Cleopatra, the message then, I know was tender, and each accent smooth, to mollify that rugged word, depart. Dolabella, oh, you mistake, he chose the harshest words, with fiery eyes and contracted brows. He coined his face in the severest stamp, and fury shook his fabric like an earthquake. He heaved for vent, and burst like bellowing Etna. In sound scarce human, hence away forever. Let her be gone, the blot of my renown, and bane of all my hopes. All the time at this speech, Cleopatra seems more, and more concerned, till she sinks quite down. Closing square bracket, let her be driven as far as men can think. From man's commerce, she'll poison to the center. Cleopatra, oh, I can bear no more. Dolabella, help, help. Oh, wretch, oh, cursed, cursed wretch. What have I done? Charmian, help, chafe her temples, Iris. Iris, bend, bend her forward quickly. Charmian. Heaven be praised. She comes again. Cleobola. Oh, let him not approach me. Why have you brought me back to this loathed being? The abode of falsehood, violated vows, and injured love. For pity, let me go. For, if there be a place of long repose, I'm sure I want it. My disdainful lord, can never break that quiet, nor awake. A sleeping soul, with hollowing in my tomb. Such words as fright her hence, unkind, unkind. Dolabella, believe me, tis against myself I speak. Kneeling, closing square bracket. That sure desires belief, I injured him. My friend ne'er spoke those words. Oh, had you seen? How often he came back, and every time, with something more obliging and more kind, to add to what he said, what dear farewells. How almost vanquished by his love he parted, and leaned to what unwillingly he left. I traitor as I was for love of you, but what can you not do who made me false? I forged that lie for whose forgiveness kneels. 
this self-accused, self-punished criminal, Teopatara, with how much ease believe we what we wish. Rise, Dolabella, if you have been guilty. I have contributed, and too much love has made me guilty too. The advance of kindness which I made was feigned to call back fleeting love by jealousy, but twould not last. Oh, rather let me lose than so ignobly trifle with his heart. Dolabella, I find your breast fenced round from human reach, transparent as a rock of solid crystal, seen through but never pierced. My friend, my friend, what endless treasure hast thou thrown away? and scattered like an infant in the ocean. Vain sums of wealth, which none can gather thence. Cleopatra, could you not beg an hour's admittance to his private ear, like one who wanders through long barren wilds, and yet foreknows no hospitable inn, his near to succor hunger eats his fill before his painful march. So would I feed a while my famished eyes, before we part, for I have far to go. If death be far, and never must return, Ventidius with Octavia behind, Ventidius, from hence you may discover, oh, sweet, sweet, would you indeed, a pretty hand in earnest. Deep Abella, I will, for this reward, takes her hand, Closing square bracket, draw it not back. Tis all I ever will beg. Ventidius, they turn upon us. Octavia, what quick eyes has guilt? Ventidius, seem not to have observed them and go on. They enter, closing square bracket. Dolabella, saw you the emperor, Ventidius? Ventidius, no. I sought him, but I heard that he was private. None with him but Hipparchus, his freedman. Dolabella, know you his business. Ventidius, giving him instructions and letters to his brother Caesar. Dolabella, well, he must be found. Hexian Dolabella and Cleopatra, closing square bracket. Octavia, most glorious impudence. Ventidius. She looked, methought, as she would say, take you old man, Octavia. Thank you, I'm better here. Well, but what use? Make we of this discovery. Octavia. Let it die. Ventidius. I pity Dolabella, but she's dangerous. Her eyes have power beyond Thessalian charms to draw the moon from heaven for eloquence. The sea green sirens taught her voice their flattery. And while she speaks, night steals upon the day, unmarked of those that hear. Then she's so charming. Age buds at sight of her and swells to youth. The holy priests gaze on her when she smiles. And with heaved hands, forgetting gravity, they bless her wanton eyes, even I, who hate her. With a malignant joy, behold such beauty. And while I curse, desire it. Antony, must needs have some remains of passion still, which may ferment into a worse relapse. If now not fully cured, I know this minute. With Caesar he's endeavoring her peace. Octavia, you have prevailed, but for a further purpose. Walks off, closing square bracket. I'll prove how he will relish this discovery. What make a strumpet's peace? It swells my heart. It must not, shall not be. Ventidius. His guards appear. Let me begin, and you shall second me. Enter Antony. Antony. Octavia, I was looking you, my love. What are your letters ready? I have given my last instructions. Octavia, mine, my lord, are written. Antony, Ventidius, 
drawing him aside. Closing square bracket. Ventidius. My lord. Antony. A word in private. When saw you Dolabella? Ventidius. Now, my lord. He parted hence, and Cleopatra with him. Antony. Speak softly, twas by my command he went. To bear my last farewell. Ventidius. It looked indeed. Aloud. Closing square bracket. Like your farewell. Antony. More softly, my farewell. What secret meaning have you in those words? Of my farewell. He did it by my order. Ventidius. Then he obeyed your order. I suppose. Aloud. Closing square bracket. You bid him do it with all gentleness. All kindness and all love. Antony. How she mourned. The poor forsaken creature. Ventidius. She took it as she ought. She bore your parting. As she did Caesar's, as she would another's. Were a new love to come. Antony. Thou dost belie her. Aloud. Closing square bracket. Most basely and maliciously belie her. Ventidius. I thought not to displease you, I have done. Octavia. You seem disturbed, my lord. Coming up. Closing square bracket. Antony. A very trifle. Retire, my love. Ventidius. It was indeed a trifle. He sent. Antony. No more. Look how thou disobeyest me. Angrily. Closing square bracket. Thy life shall answer it. Octavia. Then tis no trifle. Ventidius. To Octavia. Closing square bracket. Tis less a very nothing. You two saw it. As well as I. And therefore tis no secret. Antony. She saw it. Ventidius. Yes, she saw young Dolabella. Antony. Young Dolabella. Ventidius. Young, I think him young. And handsome too, and so do others think him. But what of that? He went by your command. Indeed, tis probable, with some kind message. For she received it graciously, she smiled. And then he grew familiar with her hand. Squeezed it and worried it with ravenous kisses. She blushed and sighed and smiled and blushed again. At last she took occasion to talk softly and brought her cheek up close and leaned on his. At which he whispered kisses back on hers. And then she cried aloud that constancy should be rewarded. Octavia, this I saw and heard. Antony. What woman was it whom you heard and saw? So playful with my friend. Not Cleopatra. Ventidius. Even she, my lord. Antony. My Cleopatra. Ventidius. Your Cleopatra. Dolabella's Cleopatra, every man's Cleopatra. Antony. Thou liest. Ventidius. I do not lie, my lord. Is this so strange? Should mistresses be left? And not provide against a time of change? You know she's not much used to lonely nights. Antony. I'll think no more owned. I know tis false, and see the plot betwixt you. You needed not have gone this way, Octavia. What harms it you that Cleopatra's just? She's mine no more. I see, and I forgive. Urge it no further, love. Octavia, are you concerned that she's found false? Antony, I should be were it so. For though tis past, I would not that the world should tax my former choice that I loved one. Of so light note, but I forgive you both. Ventidius, what has my age deserved that you should think? I would abuse your ears with perjury. If heaven be true, she's false. Antony, 
though heaven and earth should witness it, I'll not believe her tainted. Ventidius, I'll bring you then a witness from hell to prove her so, nay, go not back. Seeing Alexis just entering and starting back, closing square bracket, for stay you must and shall. Alexis, what means my lord? Ventidius, to make you do what most you hate, speak truth. You are of Cleopatra's private counsel, of her bed counsel, her lascivious hours, the conscious of each nightly change she makes, and watch her as Chaldeans do the moon, can tell what signs she passes through, what day, the lexers, my noble lord, Ventidius, my most illustrious panda, no fine set speech, no cadence, no turn, period. But a plain homespun truth is what I ask. I did myself o'er here your queen make love to Dolabella. Speak, for I will know. By your confession, what more passed betwixt them? How near the business draws to your employment? And when the happy hour? Antony, speak truth, Alexis, whether it offend. Or please, Ventidius, care not justify. Thy injured queen from malice dare his worst. Octavia, the side. See how he gives him courage. How he fears to find her false and shuts his eyes to truth. Willing to be misled, the Lexus, as far as love may plead for woman's frailty, urged by desert and greatness of the lover, so far, divine Octavia, may my queen stand even excuse to you for loving him. Who is your lord, so far, from brave Ventidius? May her past actions hope a fair report. Antony, tis well and truly spoken, Mark Ventidius. The Lexus, to you, most noble emperor, her strong passion stands not excused, but wholly justified. Her beauty's charms alone, without her crown. From Ind and Moreau drew the distant vows, of sighing kings, and at her feet were laid. The scepters of the earth, exposed on heaps, to choose where she would reign. She thought a Roman only could deserve her, and of all Romans, only Antony and to be less than wife to you, disdained, their lawful passion. Antony, tis but truth, the Lexus, and yet though love and your unmatched desert, have drawn her from the due regard of honor, at last heaven opened her unwilling eyes, to see the wrongs she offered fair Octavia, whose holy bed she lawlessly usurped, the sad effects of this improsperous war, Confirmed those pious thoughts. Ventidius, the side. Oh, wheel you there. Observe him now, the man begins to mend. And talk substantial reason, fear not, eunuch. The emperor has given thee leave to speak. The Lexus. Else had I never dared to offend his ears. With what the last necessity has urged. On my forsaken mistress, yet I must not presume to say, her heart is wholly altered. Antony, no, dare not for thy life, I charge thee, dare not pronounce that fatal word. Octavia, must I bear this? Good heaven, afford me patience. The side, closing square bracket, Ventidius. On, sweet eunuch, my dear half-man, proceed. The Lexus, yet Dolabella, hath loved her long, he, next my god, like lord, deserves her best, and should she meet his passion, rejected as she is by him she loved. Antony, hence from my sight, for I can bear no more. Let furies drag thee quick to hell, let all, the longer damned have rest, each torturing hand, that thou employ till Cleopatra comes. 
then joined there too and helped to torture her. Exit Alexis, thrust out by Antony. Closing square bracket. Octavia. Tis not well. Indeed, my lord, tis much unkind to me. To show this passion, this extreme concernment. For an abandoned, faithless prostitute. Antony. Octavia, leave me, I am much disordered. Leave me, I say. Octavia, my lord. Antony. I bid you leave me. Ventidius. Obey him, madam, best withdraw a while. And see how this will work. Octavia, wherein have I offended you, my lord? That I am bid to leave you. Am I false? Or infamous? Am I a Cleopatra? Were I she? Based as she is, you would not bid me leave you. But hang upon my neck, take slight excuses. And fawn upon my falsehood. Antony, tis too much. Too much, Octavia, I am pressed with sorrows. Too heavy to be borne, and you add more. I would retire, and recollect what's left. Of man within, to aid me. Octavia, you would mourn. In private, for your love, who has betrayed you. You did but half return to me, your kindness. Lingered behind with her, I hear, my lord. You made conditions for her. And would include her treaty. Wondrous proofs. Of love to me. Antony. Are you my friend, Ventidius? Or you turned a Dolabella too, and let this fury loose. Ventidius, oh, be advised. Sweet madam, and retire. Octavia, yes, I will go, but never to return. You shall no more be haunted with this fury. My lord, my lord, love will not always last. When urged with long unkindness and disdain. Take her again, whom you prefer to me. She stays but to be called. Poor cousin man. Let a feigned parting give her back your heart. Which a feigned love first got for injured me. Though my just sense of wrongs forbid my stay. My duty shall be yours. To the dear pledges of our former love. My tenderness and care shall be transferred. And they shall cheer by turns my widowed nights. So take my last farewell, for I despair, to have you whole, and scorn to take you half. Exit. Closing square bracket. Ventidius. I combat heaven, which blasts my best designs. My last attempt must be to win her back. But oh, I fear in vain. Exit. Closing square bracket. Antony. Why was I framed with this plain, honest heart, which knows not to disguise its griefs and weakness, but bears its workings outward to the world? I should have kept the mighty anguish in, and forced a smile at Cleopatra's falsehood. Octavia had believed it, and had stayed. But I am made a shallow, forded stream, seen to the bottom all my clearness scorned. And all my faults exposed, see where he comes. Enter Dolabella, who has profaned the sacred name of friend, and worn it into vileness. With how secure a brow and specious form, he gilds the secret villain. Sure that face was meant for honesty, but heaven mismatched it, and furnished treason out with nature's pomp, to make its work more easy. Dolabella, oh my friend, Antony, well, Dolabella, you performed my message, Dolabella, I did unwillingly, Antony, unwillingly, was it so hard for you to bear our parting, you should have wished it, Dolabella, why, Antony, because you love me, and she received my message with as true, with as unfeigned a sorrow as you brought it. Dolabella, she loves you even to madness. 
Antony, oh, I know it. You, Dolabella, do not better know how much she loves me. And should I forsake this beauty, this all-perfect creature, Dolabella, I could not wish she mine, Antony, and yet you first persuaded me how come you altered since. Dolabella, I said at first I was not fit to go. I could not hear her sighs and see her tears. But pity must prevail, and so perhaps it may again with you, for I have promised that she should take her last farewell and see. She comes to claim my word. Enter Cleopatra. Antony. False Dolabella. Dolabella. What's false, my lord? Antony. Why Dolabella's false? And Cleopatra's false, both false and faithless. Draw near, you well joined wickedness, you serpents. Whom I have in my kindly bosom warmed. Till I am stung to death. Dolabella. My lord, have I deserved to be thus used? Cleopatra, can heaven prepare a newer torment? Can it find a curse beyond our separation? Antony, yes, if fate be just much greater, heaven should be ingenious in punishing such crimes. The rolling stone and gnawing vulture with slight pains invented when Job was young, and no examples known of mighty ills, but you have ripened sin to such a monstrous growth, twill pose the gods to find an equal torture to two such. Dash, dash, oh, there's no further name to such. To me, to me, who locked my soul within your breast, had no desires, no joys, no life, but you. When half the globe was mine, I gave it you. In dowry with my heart, I had no use. No fruit of all, but you, a friend and mistress, was what the world could give. Oh, Cleopatra, oh, Dolabella, how could you betray this tender heart, which was an infant fondness? lay lulled betwixt your bosoms, and there slept, secure of injured faith. Dolabella, if she has wronged you, heaven, hell, and you revenge it. Antony, if she has wronged me, thou wouldst evade thy part of guilt, but swear, thou lovest it not her. Dolabella, not so as I love you. Antony, not so. Swear, swear, I say, thou dost not love her. Dolabella, no more than friendship will allow. Antony, no more. Friendship allows thee nothing, thou art perjured. And yet thou didst not swear thou loves it her not. But not so much, no more. O oh, trifling hypocrite, who does it not own to her, thou dost not love. Nor own to me, thou dost. Ventidius heard it. Octavia saw it. Cleopatra. They are enemies. Antony. Alexis is not so. He, he confessed it. He who next hell best knew it. He avowed it. Why do I seek a proof beyond yourself? To Dolabella. Closing square bracket. You whom I sent to bear my last farewell. Returned to plead her stay. Dolabella, what shall I answer? If to have love be guilt, then I have sinned. But if to have repented of that love, can wash away my crime, I have repented. Yet if I have offended past forgiveness, let not her suffer, she is innocent. Cleopatra, ah, what will not a woman do who loves? What means will she refuse to keep that heart? where all her joys are placed. T'was I encouraged. T'was I blew up the fire that scorched his soul, to make you jealous, and by that regain you. But all in vain I could not counterfeit. In spite of all the dams my love broke o'er, and drowned by heart again, fate took the occasion 
and thus one minute's feigning has destroyed my whole life's truth, Antony. Thin cobweb arts of falsehood, seen and broke through at first. Dolabella, forgive your mistress. Cleopatra, forgive your friend. Antony, you have convinced yourselves. You plead each other's cause, what witness have you? That you but meant to raise my jealousy. Cleopatra, ourselves and heaven. Antony, guilt witnesses for guilt. Hence, love and friendship. You have no longer place in human breasts. These two have driven you out, avoid my sight. I would not kill the man whom I have loved, and cannot hurt the woman, but avoid me. I do not know how long I can be tame, for if I stay one minute more to think, how I am wronged, my justice and revenge, will cry so loud within me that my pity will not be heard for either. Dolabella, heaven has but our sorrow for our sins, and then delights. To pardon erring man, sweet mercy seems its darling attribute which limits justice. As if there were degrees in infinite, and infinite would rather want perfection than punish to extent. Antony, I can forgive a foe, but not a mistress and a friend. Treason is there in its most horrid shape, where trust is greatest and the soul resigned. Is stabbed by its own guards, I'll hear no more. Hence from my sight forever. Cleopatra, how, forever? I cannot go one moment from your sight, and must I go forever? My joys, my only joys, are centered here. What place have I to go to? My own kingdom. That I have lost for you, or to the Romans. They hate me for your sake, or must I wander? The wide world o'er oh, uh, a helpless banished woman. Banished for love of you, banished from you. A, does the banishment. Oh, hear me, hear me. With strictest justice, for I beg no favor. And if I have offended you, then kill me. But do not banish me. Antony, I must not hear you. I have a fool within me takes your part, but honor stops my ears. Cleopatra, for pity hear me. Would you cast off a slave who followed you, who crouched beneath your spurn? He has no pity. See if he gives one tear to my departure. One look, one kind farewell, O oh iron heart. Let all the gods look down and judge betwixt us. If he did ever love, Antony, no more Alexis, Dolabella, the perjured villain, Antony, to Cleopatra, your Alexis, yours, Cleopatra, oh, twas his plot, his ruinous design, to engage you in my love by jealousy, hear him, confront him with me, let him speak, Antony, I have, I have, Cleopatra, and if he clear me not, Antony, your creature, one who hangs upon your smiles, watches your eye to say or to unsay, what e'er you please, I am not to be moved, Cleopatra, then must we part, farewell, my cruel lord, the appearance is against me, and I go, unjustified forever from your sight, how I have loved, you know, how yet I love. My only comfort is, I know myself. I love you more, even now you are unkind. Then when you love me most, so well, so truly. I'll never strive against it, but die please. To think you once were mine. Antony, good heaven, they weep at parting. Must I weep too? That calls them innocent. I must not weep, and yet I must to think. That I must not forgive. Live, but live wretched, tears but just you should. Who made me so, live from each other's sight. 
let me not hear you meet. Set all the earth, and all the seas, betwixt your sundered loves. You nothing common but the sun and skies. Now all take several ways, and each your own sad fate with mine deplore. That you were false, and I could trust no more. Exeunt severally. Closing square bracket.